Welcome, Sid. Oh, Mark Good. Blunt is joining us. Mark is a photographer in uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, soon to be a photographer today? in Columbus, Ohio. How are you guys doing today? Good. Sid, how are things, buddy? Hanging in there. It's another rainy Friday here in New Hampshire. Boo. Uh, at least it's not <laughs> snow, though. Right? That's true. Yeah, that's true. It's true. And it is nice that the uh, like the federal and state aid is starting to trickle in. So that's kind of nice, too. So we don't have to sweat bullets so much anymore. Well, that is nice. Uh, I've heard that uh, some people will be getting their stimulus checks from our oh so fantastic bureaucracy <laughs> in about 15 weeks. So yeah, right. that'll really that'll help so much. Um, now my daughter got uh, my daughter's was already in her bank uh got a week and a half ago oh really yeah her that's good her money for her family her little uh, uh, nearly three thousand twenty four hundred for her husband and yeah. five hundred for the the kid um yep. but yeah it was right in her bank and my wife and i we you know we ain't got none <laughs> hey. yeah, yeah what do you do yeah, it's anyway. it's between that and and like local stuff. Like the biggest thing was unemployment. Like because we're self-employed, we don't really qualify for unemployment, but our state governor said, you know, effective on this day, self-employed people can also apply. So I applied back in mid-March and the first time I got rejected because the system hadn't been set up for self-employed people yet. Right. Um second time I got accepted, so I got accepted on March 15th and it's taken from March 15th until Wednesday. Um, for anything to come in so luckily I got each week it built up but it was a stressful five weeks wait for that stuff to sort of come in and then the stimulus um, I found out because I pay taxes and I don't get refunds they didn't have my routing number on on file yeah, same with me same with me so I, I had to get yeah so I had to give that to them and now it says that you know I qualify for it it's just they're not sure when I'm going to get it now um, but at least something's trickling in so that's that's a little reassuring yeah, they don't have my routing. Well, they have my routing number, but I don't think they're going to send me anything there. I think they're going to send it. Uh, we do most of our stuff through the mail. So yeah. waiting yeah. for a check from them in the mail, um, which I, I'm not really sure I'll, what I'll use it for yet. Probably I'll just use it to pay taxes. <laughs> just right. say, thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, Put towards next year. Uh, crazy, Wait. crazy times out there. How, how's Vermont doing? Um, uh okay it's not it's not as bad i think we've got i want to say there's only been like 40 fatalities so far you know like to put it in perspective mm -hmm. um so it, it seems pretty good there's still there's still no idea when they're gonna start yeah. passively opening up again um you know, the governor said i think what they're i think i think what the governor wants to do is he wants to wait to see what massachusetts does because New Hampshire's right. I mean, where I am, it's right on the mass border. So sure. I think he doesn't want, he doesn't want New Hampshire to open up first and then just get this deluge of people from Massachusetts all coming in because they're still on lockdown. So I think what he wants to do is wait. He wants to wait until mass starts opening up and then he'll start open. I, it's really crazy. Really crazy. Really yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking for data. I just want yeah. data. So you've lost 40 people to coronavirus, right? Yep. How many people died of the flu? I don't want to make a, con I'm not saying, well, you know, they died of the flu, but right. how many people died of the flu? Right. All of a sudden we don't know. Right. That bothers me. Huh. Yeah. That bothers me because we've got people getting sick of all kinds of crap and dying, but we only <laughs> seem to be focused on that one group right now, which I understand, but at the same time, if we just start ignoring those other numbers, it's pretty, we don't have data that, that works then. Right. You, you've seen the uh, New York study that says like uh, one out of every five in New York have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I read over. If that's the case, then it's going to change everything. Yeah. They said, I read one report that said over the weekend in New York city, uh, every 12 minutes, somebody was dying from this. So that's, that's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I did, I did read where, um, uh, whiskey was good. Mm -hmm. Uh, smoking apparently, um, 
they're saying in France, they're saying smoking seems to have uh, uh, some sort of, you don't get it if you're smoking. So they're giving, or they're milder if you're smoking. So they're putting nicotine patches on people. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so basically during the shutdown, we are to sit around, get checks from the government, <laughs> smoke, drink, and watch TV. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm and thinking, they're still messing it up. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, count me in for that, baby. <laughs> yeah. But plus it'll be interesting to see what happens after this weekend because there was a bunch of protests that were going on. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens from that, you know, like who who at the protests ends up getting sick and spreading it to other people at the protest. Well, we had one here in Hampshire and it was I think there was about 125 people that showed up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if any of those people got, because they were just running around with their guns and they didn't have masks on and they were getting all up in other people's faces. And, you know, um, and, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be really honest with you. I'm kind of with them in spirit. I'm th it's time to get going. We got to get the economy back up, but doing that shit just looks stupid. No, that's right. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, I think those kinds of uh, we're going to stand in the street and I, you know, and I, whether you're, whether you're wearing a gun and a, uh, 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 you know, don't tread on me flag or a pussy mm -hmm. hat. It's all just stupid. <laughs> Nobody right. cares. Those, the, those demonstrations from the sixties worked then no one cares now. Everybody looks stupid. We got to get out and, and work at it. But yeah, yeah, I'm on the side of getting things open smartly. Right. Um, right. but we were talking about, uh, you know, some of the art forms that are going to be damaged from this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I think we can all be pretty much in agreement that Broadway is not right, coming right. back for a long time. That's a lot of dancers, people who've worked their whole lives, learning how to tap dance, et cetera. They're not, they're not coming back. Not for, not for 2020. Right. And right. probably not for 2021, unless we have yeah. this, unless a great vaccine and let's hope we get one, you yeah. know? Um, and even then, I don't know. Maybe I, a lot of people are like, well, maybe I don't ever want to go back to like sitting crowded next to people and stuff. Mm. I don't know. Uh, ballet, of course, is uh, just gone for for a while. Let's hope it. Hope this stuff comes back. Symphony orchestras, our mm -hmm. biggest and most luxurious buildings, uh, set aside for the arts and enjoyment, are now going to sit empty. Sports stadiums, symphony halls, mm -hmm. those types of things. That's really, really sad for me. Mm -hmm. Really sad. And photography, I happen to think photography, judging from what I'm seeing out there and talking to my, my photo students, photography could come roaring back or it couldn't. That It's, it's going to be one or the other. Yeah. And I do think it's going to come roaring back because they're getting photographers are being asked to shoot. Mm -hmm. I know you're a, you're a people shooter. You yeah. got, you got, you know, you're a people shooter. It's yeah. going to be a, a hang up. Uh, but product and folks are, they're out there shooting. Um, the other thing is when the people stuff comes back, Sid, you're going to be busy as hell. Yeah. I already got my first call uh, yesterday. He was, he, oh, good. we're, we're trying to, I, you know, like I, I think I'm going to try to get somebody, I'm going to get, try to get him in next, next week sometime. Um, but I, you know, I made sure that he knows I'm like, even, you know, if you had any kind of a cough, like we're not going to do it. And if you've been sick at all, we're not going to do it. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, I've been, you know, staying home and not doing anything. He's, so I think, I think probably sometime towards the end of next week, I'll schedule that just to, it'll be nice. It'll be, you know, it'll be exciting to actually shoot again. So. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I have a plan, Don, on how I'm going to work on approaching that because I have my studio downtown and it's probably about 20, 20 by 15 feet, I'd say. And uh, I'm going to promote that, you know, I'm not, I've got the studio, we can be isolated away from each other, we can maintain, you know, plenty of distance down there, there's not a bunch of traffic around or anything like that, you know sanitized before you come in i can you know be out in the hallway so the, you know i i think that what's going to make a difference is how people are trying to approach it with these customers and saying you know we can still do it and i have a safe way of doing it well yeah you know, and, you know and and commercial photography should be should be allowed to open anyway because mm -hmm. if grocery stores are open they have a vastly more dense 
population, even when everyone's socially distancing, yeah. than a photography studio does. Yeah. Yep. What's happened yep. is this one size fits all. Well, it's a commercial building. You can't go in. Instead mm -hmm. of saying, well, how many people work there? Well, it's a commercial building and Sid works there. Yeah. <laughs> all by himself. Yeah. Now, Sid yeah. has been known to only wash one hand because That's, he, lives oh, 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 oh. he lives dangerously. Oh, no. I'm ambidextrous, so, you know. <laughs> you never know Both equal. <laughs> which hand it's going to be. Well, we were watching the news this morning and just even, you know, with all the TV, like, there are so many commercials that are coming on now where, you know, there's there's actually, it looks like there's a big demand for people that can do um, video or photography yes. to, yes. that they're trying to show, like, we're safe, come in, we're here for you. And, you know, yes. there's a lot of new commercials being produced right now. That, yeah, that and by the now. way, the new commercials that are being produced, is there anything you've noticed about them, guys? It's all stock footage. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's no production companies working. None in Hollywood, none in New York. Production companies are down. They are forbidden by law to be out working. So these new commercials that you're seeing, especially these uh, pharmaceutical commercials, you know, we're with you 100%. That's all stock footage. Mm. <laughs> so I guarantee you they're going to want some footage for their of their own pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So... Let's say hi to Sophie. Sophie's here. Sophie, how is France doing this morning, my dear? She saw she shaved her head recently. Yes. I love your haircut. Thank you. <laughs> I'm about to join you if they don't open the barber shop soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do it at home, so it's more. Do you know how? Do you know how many women cannot wear that, Sophie? And you wear yeah, it. I, you wear it beautifully. I think because. Um, I really enjoy it and so I really like it so you have to carry it it's not like a regular hairstyle for a woman you gotta own it. yeah yeah but because I really like it even when I meet people that have not because I go from hair with no hair and I do cycles it's not always like and uh, when I meet people I forget mm -hmm. I just forget that sure. it's that short and so people I, I meet people and I go and I go, what? And they go, your hair. And I'm like, you know, it's it's really, uh, I don't know, I really enjoy it this time around. So you should you should look at them and say, you see hair? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of it, but yep. yeah. You know, I want to see uh, next time. I, I'm just gonna put this bug in your. I'm thinking a purple mohawk. I'm just, uh, and I think Sid is agreeing with me. A purple mohawk. <laughs> It would look so good with your sweater. Oh, yep. it would look fantastic. And your glasses, very, yes. So how are things in France, Sophie? Oh, I've given up. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just, um, well, go. actually, actually, the good news is that um, it looks like I'm going to be allowed to start working on the 12th of May. Good. So that's nice. Uh, Good. So, um, and you're doing your email blasts and letting people know, right? Yeah, and also, um, so that's for my other work, but also uh, because um, with two other colleagues, um, I don't do a lot nowadays. I'm, I'm more on the therapy side, but I used to do massage a lot. And so we're putting a, a flyer that I'm designing in nice. Photoshop. Nice. Because the difference between last week and this week is that I'm no longer a Photoshop virgin. Oh! Hey. <laughs> I've taken my first class on Photoshop. <laughs> that, that's really, really cool. And are you, where are you taking the classes? Uh, Picks Imperfect. Oh, great. Yeah. You know. He's great. I've only taken the one for real beginners, but it's great for laying out all the buttons and stuff. It's fantastic. Anyway, so with my colleagues, uh, we're, I'm doing this flyer because we want to offer the medical staff that has been working so hard um, a 50% off on one massage mm -hmm. as a thank you, um, as a way to say thank you for all they've done. And mm -hmm. so we're preparing that and that we'll be giving it to the hospital and to the nurses and doctors and so on to, um, so that's happening. 
and um, I ha I have started working on my website a little bit. But but what did what did you decide to go with? See, that's like that's. <laughs> I mean, are you are you looking at the Adobe? No, my my current uh, work website. Uh -huh. I I'm allowed a sub website, and they have some for photography. So I I, I look at what you shared today for all these IDs for portfolios, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and and I will I will try to find something that works well enough for now, so that I can directly link it to my work. Um, That's, yeah, linking it up is easy to do. Um, if you haven't looked at format yet, look at format. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the Adobe is really good. The one that, that you get with Photoshop and Lightroom. It's okay. a beautiful hosting platform, but the SEO really sinks. Just sucks. And if you are at all going to trust SEO to help boost your, your work, you, you can't go there. They, you can't mm. SEO your images, so you and, you and it has no blog and all the other things. But uh, format, you can SEO your images. It'll keep your image name, and you can put a description, and that'll help get you found. So okay, not that I have anything against Adobe. If you're just doing a website because you want to share pictures with your friends and stuff, yeah. it's beautiful. It works really well. But for me, I, I really want to push the. Um, so I created this therapeutic tool based on photography yes. uh -huh. so i really want to start pushing that and i also really want to start uh maybe selling some of my prints and stuff even if it's like very small uh, quantities and do little uh, booklets mm. like uh, almost like notebooks small things so that they don't have to be very expensive and to um to do small editions, like small a small number of prints, but I think I really need to push myself and start to try to do stuff like that. Well, I agree with that very much, and um, you know I have a a few things that I think about uh, selling prints. Sid, do you sell prints at all? You're on mute. Oh, okay. There we go. Look at that. I'm such a newbie. Um, yes and no. I, I, when I, I went to a fine arts college, so I was doing um, fine art work back then. And mm -hmm. when I graduated, I had a gallery here that was taking some, some of my work down to New York and stuff like that. Um, since then, I've sort of cut back on doing that only because I had gone out and I had bought like these two large uh, inkjet format printers and it was just I didn't use them enough and so the inks kept clogging and then I would have to flush it big long story that you don't need to hear about yeah you gotta um, run them you gotta run them almost every day oh yeah it was so what I ended up doing was um I created uh or I signed up for like society six which is like a print on demand kind of thing right um because I wasn't selling enough of my numbered editions I figured well I'll just upload images and then people can just order prints you know if they really like the work so i've been using that for the last uh oh gosh maybe seven or eight years um and it's 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 good like i've never from the orders that have come in i've never gotten like a negative review based on the quality of of what they produce that's nice. um, so that's yeah so that's good and it's nice because all i need to do is just upload it and then i i set my price points um and then i don't have to think about it um, whereas when I was, you know, doing the, the stuff out of the studio, it was just, it was, it was very time consuming. And I, and I, I've never compared the prints from what this online place does compared to how I used to print them. Um, but I don't, I just don't worry about that. So it's, it's like, that's pretty good. Like, so, and there's all, there's like fine art America and there's society six and there's all kinds of sites out there where you just upload stuff, you upload sizes. Um, you know, you enter in what you want your profit to be and then they just automate everything and the sales go right through them and they print and they direct mail to other people. Yep. Um, so that's, that's, that's nice. Um, one of the things that I think, Sophie, by the way, when you're selling is I think you need to keep your offering small. Yeah, you yeah. Say, I remember you saying yeah. that, yeah. You, you, you sell maybe in w one size or two sizes, but if you start yeah. getting selling five by sevens and four by uh, sixes and stuff, yeah. I think it mm -hmm. cheapens your, out, your output. It's like, I don't care what I sell you. I just want to sell you something. Yeah, no, just, I just buy something. I, just buy any. Here's a mug. <laughs> you like mugs? 
<laughs> you drink coffee? Uh, the cafe I think if you want to do a, a cheap <laughs> version, you can do a set of postcards. Mm -hmm. Well, that, um, that, is, that is a postcard, and then that's what it is. But yeah, it's but not compared you can to do. But you can do beautiful postcards. So there's a place called Artifact Uprising, a printer, and they use only. Uh, they're in Colorado, and they use only wood from fallen trees. Oh wow! So they're not <laughs> cutting down any trees to make anything. It's all, uh, and the the paper has this beautiful texture to it. So it's not glossy. So if you're looking for glossy, it's not the place. Uh, Beautiful um, semi-matte texture to it. Um, they're not cheap, but they're gorgeous. And every time I hand somebody one of those cards, they go, oh, this is nice. I look at it, you know? And you can do a run of postcards, certainly. And then they also make little boxes. Put the eight postcards or six postcards in a little box. And now you've got a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, books are starting to become works of art. Not starting. They they've been there, but more and more photographers are doing, doing books as a single item of art. Yeah. So I just saw uh, a, uh, a book over on uh, a photo editor, I believe uh, uh, the, the, the gentleman, he printed 100 of the books and he sells them for, he printed them through Blurb and they're big, big books and he sells them for like $350 a piece. And he sold out. He sold all, all 100 of the books. Oh, wow. Um, and his profit was probably 75 to $80 a piece. You know, he wanted to make money out of it. And selling books is hard because if you go to the, you know, if you do the blurb thing or whatever, blurb takes a, you know, a lot of, it's a lot of money to print a book, mm -hmm. you know, and then so you end up with these price points. So if it's a, you're, you're printing a $29 book, like how to do headshots in your car or something, and you got this $29, but what well, you can't get $29 for a book like that. I mean, you just, you can't. Yeah. And if you want to make any money, it'd have to be a $69 book. And who's going to pay $69 for a, a book they could get from Amphoto for 18 bucks. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you created as a piece of art, you know, count me in, I'd be looking at that. This kid's book was this young person's book was so good. I, I actually clicked on through to see, see, I was really tempted to buy one. I was really tempted to buy one. Big, hardback coffee table book with beautiful images. You know, mm. <laughs> thank God they were sold out. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, what's this uh, three hundred and seventy-five dollar yeah, thing for a book? I, yeah. Oh, I don't know, honey. It looks like fraud to me. I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll check in on it. Uh, <laughs> Is Artifact Uprising the one that you use for your motorcycle postcards? Yes, it is. Yeah, those are those are really nice. Yes, it is. What I did said uh, I I went on the motorcycle ride, and I and I told everybody if they wanted to buy me a cup of coffee or a tank of gas, I'd send them a postcard. Oh, nice. And uh, from the trip, so I went out and I did some shots, and I sent the postcards out, and then I retired those images. So, Mark, you got a postcard? Mark? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I, had that, to, I was that, muted. I was in and out of place. That image, will uh, be, that image will never be printed and sold. So you have a not a one of a kind, but a few of a kind. Mm. Yep. <laughs> yep. I got them downstairs next to my computer in my in my basement. I promised everybody one. I think I sent you two, right? Yeah. Yeah. You sent two. Cause... Yeah. I promised everybody one. I sent two. It was so. It was so much fun to do, and I love those postcards. I really, really do. My, my <laughs> wife was, my wife was laughing at me when I got them because I was geeking out about it. She's like, "You're silly." I'm like, "You don't understand. This is a photo from Don. Like, this is <laughs> yeah, a photo from Don. It's like manna from heaven, right there." <laughs> well, you know, it, it's out. You uh, you know, because I followed you for so long and and everything it's like i sometimes it's funny because i get nervous when we're doing webinars and stuff and she's like why i'm like because it's dawn like I, you know i still get a little starstruck well since i do have you on there mark um i'm gonna put this on ebay it's a little bag <laughs> but it's my bag <laughs> now is it a regular bag or is it it's a, a, it's a bag, bag that came with some cheap uh, uh reading glasses but this used post-it notes dude mm -hmm. It's even got my <laughs> writing on the back. This will be going for fifty-five to seventy-five dollars. So be watching for it. 
you just take a red marker and put a little red ring around it, you can get five times as much. I'll do that. Yeah. And hand sign who needs hand sanitizer? It's my hand sanitizer. <laughs> right. Well, hey. if, if it was if it was for photography, I'd probably pay like fifty dollars more for it. <laughs> it well, it says photography. <laughs> it's photo hand sanitizer. It really yep. is. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, if it really was photo hand sanitizer, it'd have to come in a black uh, thing. So, um, <laughs> you guys know what flocking paper is? Mm -mm. Black flocking paper. It's paper that feels like it has um, uh, a real rough texture to it, like felt almost on one side. They use it in arts and crafts stores and things. Oh. Uh, but flocking paper is absolutely black in a photo studio. It's oh, just okay. very rough. And um, uh, one, only one company made it for years. I think there's others make, but only one company made it for years. They sold it on a 20 foot by 18, I think 18 inch by 20 foot roll. And they sold it to display, you know, people who put displays in, in, uh, um, you know, uh, stores, big fancy stores, like in New York, mm -hmm. display windows, Green displays. always using flocking paper, right? They also took the same flocking paper, put it in a black bag and called it photo black background paper. <laughs> and the flocking paper, the flock, this is true, true story. The flocking paper was $8 a roll and the yeah. photography paper was $29 a roll. Yep. And the only thing that was different was the black plastic bag that they put it in. Yep. yep. I love just, those guys. <laughs> Just to come back on those prints, I, I have a friend that made something I thought that I, I would make ne next time I have uh, an exhibition going. He did the equivalent of a secret Santa for prints. Basically, he made like 30 envelopes with an A4 size print inside. Right. And uh, you just gave 30 euros and you got one and you didn't know which one you were going to get. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And I thought that was that's a really nice thing to to just um, you know, who was you put your hand in the bag and you pick one and that's the one you get. Who was telling us? Uh, was it last time someone was talking about somebody leaving photographs all over town? It's Timo. He got the ID, or you, it's you, and you gave the ID to Timo. Yeah, he was. He was sure he showed that image with that really nice little photograph that he had. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. How many have you left out, Sid? Uh, I've done three runs so far, um, and usually I, I just grab maybe seven or eight of them, and then we'll just take an afternoon, like a Friday afternoon, and we just walk around town, and then I just hide them, and then I'll take a, a pullback shot of, like, my hand in the shot pointing at the item, and then usually you can sort of see, like, roughly where it is down, you know, within the, the area. Um, so I've done about three. We did the last one we did was to correspond with um, – they have what they call Art Walk, which is like a, a city-wide open right. studios event where they have a map and everything. So we did it to coincide with that. And so it's like, oh, go, you go to my Instagram page and you can see all the different places where I've hidden these things. And then we hid them on the Art Walk t course, you know, the, the map. The did thing. you protect them anyway? Are they in like little plastic bags or something? Yeah, I bought. I went to like clearbags.com and I bought a bunch of little sealable bags that are, um, you know, waterproof and stuff like that. And then we right. just... We just use painter's tape so that they don't damage the walls or anything that we put them on. Um, and a few people found them and then they like, you know, like on the back of it, it says, if you find it, just take a photo of it and tag it on Instagram so we can track it and everything. And a few people found them and they tagged them and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of nice. Just, you know, the idea of just, you're just out doing something. And I all love of a sudden it. You look down That's and you're great. like, oh, like a little free piece of art, you know, and you get to keep it. And Yeah, I love it. It's just a yeah. great, great, great idea. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to steal it. Do it. I, 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 everybody should, I hope everybody does it. I think it's fantastic. I'd love to be like walking down downtown and just stumble across all kinds of different art from that everybody. Mm -hmm. There was one person locally that wanted to, but she does these incredibly detailed micro, like they're just, they're so tiny. It's like really detailed things, but they're mega tiny. And she wanted to buy a gumball machine and she wanted to put all of these little things inside um, the little gumball capsules, like those little plastic capsules so that you could go to this vending machine and put in 25 cents or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you would get this, this little tiny piece of art that you could take home with you. And I was like, that's wow. genius. Like do it. That's genius. Oh my God. Yeah. I remember some story, I believe it was about Picasso. Picasso would, uh, tip, um, waitresses and waiters with a little, yeah, he'd draw on the napkins, draw on the napkin kind of thing. Yeah. And they'd go, 
you know, and they look at it and it, you know, it's, it's <laughs> worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, I'm going to quit my job now. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was, that's, that's really fun. I love that idea. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you guys a question. I, I, this is something that came up yesterday. I saw a photographer's portfolio. Um, and it was really some nice work. And I don't want to go into it because there's some, I'm going to talk a little bit negatively about what I saw. So I started scrolling down and I thought, wow, this is some really, really nice work. And I stopped because I'd pretty much gotten a, you know, a feeling of the work, right? Later, I was talking to somebody who I'd sent the thing to and they said, I, th I think his work looks cheesy. And I'm like, what? Because I know this photographer that I'm talking to. I'm like, this guy's got good taste. This other photographer. What he was talking about was the guy has over 400 images on each of his portfolio pages. Uh, too much. Yeah. And if you keep scrolling down, you start seeing like, let's say I took my daughter out uh, for a motorcycle ride um, and, and uh, she's wearing leather. So I get a shot of her sitting on the bike and that's up, up at the top. Pretty good shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then later down, maybe she's, like she's riding the bike. That's a nice shot. Eventually though, there's like 27 other shots of her. And, and it's like, I saw his point about cheesy. Even though I think he's a really good photographer, he looks amateur to me. He's got to edit. He needs to edit all that down. Just, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because it makes it look like it's running. It, it makes it looks like look like it's run and gun, and then they got one or good two shots right. with the thirty that were no good. Yeah, and here's the here's the honest to god truth. This guy did get three and four, three or four shots of that one subject. He didn't get thirty really great right. shots. There's yeah. a, a lot of like yeah. no no, yep. and it just yeah. cheapened the whole portfolio. I'm I tell people. When I'm working with people one on one, I tell them, "Look, 32 images in each button should More tell you the story." Now, Sid, I've never yeah. looked at your website, so if I'm uh, uh, on your toes here, I mean, no. I, have, I have looked at your website, but I didn't look at it before I brought this up. So I, I don't yeah, know. No, I, I try to limit to a certain number. I try to never repeat the same. It's one image from every shoot, so I, I try to never duplicate. You know, like you go, and you're like, "Oh, I, here's a different version of this person that I just saw." Um, I try to, it's, it's one image from each gig. I try mm -hmm. not to ever put two or more images on there. Cause I don't want people to flip through and be like, why is there two from the same shot? Like that just feels kind of filler to me. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to edit your own work. Cause it's, it's a lot of, especially nowadays, like when we used to do portfolio stuff in, in the print days, mm -hmm. you were printing everything out and you were laying it on the ground and you were standing over it and you were moving things around and how does this lead into this one and da 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 da. But nowadays, it's so easy to just, you know, take a folder and dump it into Squarespace and it's instantly there. Too easy. Um, Too yeah, easy. Yeah, there, there's a, and it's, it's hard because it's, you can't, I mean, everybody else sees your work differently from the way you see it. And you have this association with it and you remember all that stuff that goes into these images and you can't separate yourself from that. So when you sit down to do this edit where it's like, okay, I need to edit it down to 15 shots and your your brain just starts smoking because you don't know you i don't want to remove this one because this is i love this image and i love, I love this, this image. image i and work so hard for this image right and it could be a really good shot but it might not go with the flow of the rest of the portfolio and a lot of yeah. people they freak out about that and they don't know how to stand back from from that uh, um so i have them print their images i tell me if you don't want to print them yourself on your printer or use uh, photoshop's contact sheet yep thing and you can make little prints you've got to print them you've got to put them on a white board with ta yep. sticky tape or whatever so you yep. can move them around yep. they'll say well yeah but for my website yeah for your website absolutely yep. Yep. Um, yep if you're doing a mosaic you don't have any control when someone goes to your mosaic and clicks on one but you do have control if they hit if they click the arrow yep. you do so you want to maintain that Yep. Go down to, go down to CVS and get a whole batch of, you know, little four by five prints that are like eight cents a piece, right. spend the $25, bring them back, lay them on the floor. And then you've got to, you've got to start moving them around and you've got to find that flow. You have to see all of your pictures with one eye. Yep. One view. 
you cannot do it on a computer going no. looking at this picture and then going back to that picture and then going and then going to this fold you can't do it no, no. Uh, and i can always tell when portfolios are done that way i can always tell they just they just don't coalesce yeah. i think that every photographer uh this may sound self-serving i don't do it very often but i do do i do consultations with portfolios and stuff but that being said every photographer should have another set of eyes mm -hmm. in their portfolio here's who, it, here's who it cannot be it cannot be your wife or your husband or your partner no they love you and they're going to love everything you did yep uh it can't be another photographer who does what you do right because we're just shitty people <laughs> it cannot be a photographer who <laughs> it cannot be a photographer who doesn't understand what you do. So if you're a fashion photographer and you're grabbing some old guy, uh, I was referred to in the store the other night, other day by a guy. He says, uh, "Hey, old timer." I thought, "Old timer? Mm. Oh, anyway, uh, <laughs> you can't have some old timer who's been doing architecture for forty years look at your hot new fashion book." Not because they're not good photographers, but they don't get it. They don't get what you're doing. So you won't get from them. You need to find someone who's like an art director or there are portfolio consultants out there whose job it is to make you have a great portfolio. They're, they're not butt hurt if your photos are great or not. They wanna help you make a great portfolio. And most of the ones that I, that I know and work, have worked with are totally dedicated to getting the best portfolio they can of you. I have seen, I had a photographer in Seattle who had been going down to the ad agencies and uh, he had started shooting a lot of, uh, as he started as a lot of people do, uh, you guys uh, shooting models, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, had uh, progressed to shooting uh, some agency models, but not very many because the agencies wouldn't see him. And he had a portfolio. I said, bring your portfolio down. I was in Seattle. Bring your portfolio down and bring all the pictures that you thought about putting in your portfolio that you didn't. Guess how many of them ended up in his portfolio? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. About 60% of them. Yeah. He was putting stuff in his book that was, he was thinking it like, wow, I, this agency will love this picture because this girl, yeah, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. So we redid the agency or the, the book. The next day he went to an ad agency downtown and they welcomed him in with open arms when they saw his book. They looked at his book, said, oh, this is great. You know, leave your information here. He ended up working for him a couple of times, but the same book, same book, just with the right images in it. The, and, and books can have the right images in it all, all, all along and be in the wrong order. Yep seen that happen that's terrible yep yeah yeah you have to you've got to um that seems to be sort of one of the the pre the downfalls of people who have learned online and not like through college or you know like mm -hmm. interning is to be able to sit down and do that self edit like they've never had the the critique kind of situation where you know a group of people go through your work and they start moving images around on the board and everything and you're you're just kind of like why is everybody touching my stuff and they're like no you here's the flow so that's the one thing is is you've got to be able to set all this stuff up and then step back and look at it as if you didn't shoot any of this yes you know, That's just pretend, yeah, pretend, you know, don't, don't think about the stories behind the images and how this one's so important to you and everything. Just assume, pretend you're looking at somebody else's work and they've actually laid it out for them for in a cohesive flow that would be part of a portfolio or something like yeah. that. And you've, you've, you've got to, you've got to not, you've got to look at it objectively and not like, Oh, I did these. Yeah. That's really hard. Here's, here's a, here's a little tip that I, I do with photographers. Um, get all your images that you want to put in your book and flip them uh, backwards, print them out mm -hmm. backwards. Oh. Because if they work backwards, they'll work forwards as well. Okay, interesting. When you print them out backwards, you're gonna see, the, it's like, instead of you, you, you shoot with a Hasselblad. All right, so I know you shoot with a right. black. So yep. the image is backwards. Yep. Right? Tell me the truth. Think about it for a second. Tell me the truth. When you look through the Hasselblad, you see more than you see through your DSL. You look more. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to. Yeah. Yep. 
and then you get under a uh, eight by 10 or a four by five, everything is not only backwards, it's upside down. Yep. And yeah. Edward, uh, Brett Weston at a, at a workshop, Brett Weston said something that I've always remembered. He said, if it works upside down and backwards, it's probably going to work. It's going to work right the right way. <laughs> I, I do that when I paint, like when I'm painting details on eyes, on portraits or you know, uh -huh. pet portraits or whatever, I flip the painting upside down. I put the reference photo upside down because that way you're, you know the way an eye is supposed to look. So if you, mm -hmm. if you paint it looking at it normal, you see it differently than when you flip it upside down. Because then when you flip it upside down, you're really concentrating on the shape of it. Yep. So yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's really important. So if you do the same thing with your portfolio image, you're gonna start mm -hmm. to see design, shape, color, mm -hmm. uh, things that you may not notice when it's flipped up. I shoot in black and white a lot. Do you do that, Sid? Yep. The, the preview in, on the black and white? Yep. I'll do like when I'm working with client, like my headshots, I shoot everything in color. A majority of the headshots on my website are in black and white. I love a black and white headshot. Just it's crisp and it's clean. And when I shoot in the studio, um, you know, they know in advance I shoot in color, but I've got my, my LCD set to black and white. Yes. Yep. Um, and then that way, you know, like I can show it to them during the shoot. I'm mean, like, look how good is, look how good this looks as a black and white. Like this is kick ass. And then usually like that sells them. Like every once in a while, someone will like email me back and be like, oh, well, do you have this file on color? And, and, and um, sometimes I'll be like, you know, yeah, I, like, I don't want to give it to you in color. Like I even showed it to you on the back. Like a lot of sometimes, like when I used to do high school seniors, mm -hmm. I would, I would lie to them. I would set it to black and white. I would shoot it, you know, I'd show it to them in black and white. I'd make sure they saw it in black and white. And then if they came back and said, oh, could I have this as a color file? And I'd be like, no, no, I showed you when I was doing the session, we shot it in black and white. Like that's how committed I am to this black and white shot. You're not getting, it like, doesn't exist. Like this is the only way you're going to get it is black and white. You could have had, now I'm just thinking like a businessman here. You could have had a little check mark on there, RGB. Fifteen dollars for each one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the upside. The so if you do want that charge. four by six, which is fifteen dollars, it's an extra forty-five dollars, and I'll put the RGB back in on mm -hmm. it. You'll be fine. You'll just be rocking the moment. <laughs> um, they they got to pay for the post processing time to convert it back. Yes, yes, it's, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I gotta add. Well, in file, wait a minute. There's file retrieval. <laughs> I had a I had a phone call once that I I did weddings for three years for a, a small group of people. I did weddings, and I I will admit to that. Uh, eventually, the drugs kicked in, and I got control of my life again. But um, mm -hmm. when I was doing this, I got I got a phone call that described my wedding experience. I answered the phone, and a very sweet female voice said, "Hi." I was at that wedding and I want to know if I can get a four by six of me. <laughs> and I'm like, before I, before I tell you how much the four by six is, I may have a few questions for you. Just, <laughs> just a few. Anyway, that was, that was me doing weddings and uh, you know, and then, you oh. have to, then you have to go and find a negative, you know, it wasn't difficult. You have to go find a negative and take it to the lab for a four by six. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to tell her no. I mean, that, that would be wrong. It wasn't worth it. Um, <laughs> actually, I was actually a photo photographer before Photoshop. That's just weird. It's just, maybe I am an old timer. Ugh. I shoot with it on black and white because I can see the picture. Well, you just used Adobe Spot Tone. That's, you know, the equivalent. Yeah. Your little jars of Adobe Spot Tone and your little brushes and it just painted it. Painting uh, on the, yep. When I have my, my screen in black and white, I can see the shape of what's in front of me. I can see color, color can grab you mm. and hold your attention. That's um, why I go for black and white. Yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, even if I'm doing color, even if I'm, it's going to be a color shot, I still will do the uh, the bulk of my shooting on black and white now if i'm down in the uh, you know slot canyons or something no i'm not going to do that but um uh, or maybe i should i don't know um but 
if I'm uh, if I'm doing anything like in the studio, still life work in the studio, oh, I turn it on black and white. Yep. If you want to see problems jump out at you, turn your your preview to black and white. <laughs> oh, they become so much more vivid. <laughs> Well, I hope everybody is um, out there who's wa watching this, and we are getting this. Uh, there he is. This there is Mark. Yeah. Uh, I finally uh, landed at the house. <laughs> I hope everybody's staying safe. And, uh, Trying to. Anybody shoot anything new? My pile of dust. You should. <laughs> huh? What did you say, Kobe? Well, she did. It's not a joke. It's she did earlier different. say she did earlier say she'd given up. So pile, we'll we'll get go with the pile of dust was Sophie's swan song. She shot the dust and said, "Screw it." <laughs> well, I, I literally saved up like instead of hoovering, I've been sweeping the floor, and so I've literally saved all the dust. Yeah, and I've literally made a pile of it and lit it with gels. Where where is it? Let's see it. Okay, let me find it. Very, that'll be very abstract. I put it on the I put it on the groups page. Didn't get a lot of attention. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Do we have to let her told us what it was. <laughs> well, but that, that was part of the trick. What that was part of the um, sure. But at the same time, it was an opportunity to start learning focus stacking. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it's coming slowly. Um, so that was my <laughs> my shoot. <laughs> and and a photo of my cut hair. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Which is in the same. So can I share it? Yes. Yes. Voila. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. So it's not quite sharp, so I'm still trying to get that focus stacking thing. Mm -hmm. now, did so you this watch, is... Did you purchase mm -hmm. Helicon? No, but I, I'm trying... Because the camera does it. You can set the camera and it kind of works like time lapse. You can tell it how to take the photos and so on. But I think it sometimes it's got a problem focusing the camera yeah huh. so um, yeah i didn't i didn't buy the and also i'm not quite understanding the depth of things and stuff so it's anyway what camera do you have sorry what kind what type of camera do you have that can do that okay it's got it's got a focus stacking menu and you set which, it up like you do a time lapse which one oh, is this D850. Oh, the D850. Yeah. So this is this you focus like in front, like closest to you, and then you slowly exactly. back the focus. So it goes, well, you yep. focus in front of you at the closest you can, mm -hmm. and then you tell the camera take um, you. You have the the width at which the next focus is going to be, and it's between one and ten. And then, so you choose between like very small or, or wide, and then you can choose at each, um, the interval at which it's taking the photo because with the, with the flashes, I need to, so I was leaving 10 seconds to be sure the flashes would recharge. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can set the number of photos, and then you can also choose to have the mirror to stay up while it's taking the photos but okay, I, didn't right. manage, I didn't manage to get that working with the flash so but anyway it's That's great. Uh, it's a good it's a good menu yeah it's but i'm still so i'm still trying to figure um, it out sophie yes are you sure it works with every lens don't you have to have that now i'm going to sound like a tech technical Technophobe idiot. I can't remember the, what it's called, but there's a lens. Every lens that we have, normal lenses, when you focus them, they actually change point of view. They get a little closer, they get a little farther apart. 
but they make a, a cinema lens. In fact, that's what mm. it's called, a cinema lens, so that no matter where you're focused, it hasn't changed the size. It's very small when it does it, uh, but it hasn't changed the size. Is that what might be happening with you? Are you using the right lens or does it say? Or I Googled focus stacking with D850. Okay. <laughs> And it, I had a five minute video on how to do it. And that's as far, it did not mention anything about using a specific lens, but when you import it into light um, Photoshop, then it, you have to tick a box so that it adjusts those difference. Okay, those, all right, all right. That, that Registration or something. Yeah. So Photoshop's gonna take that into account then. Yes. Yeah, I did that pineapple shot for the, the class and I had to, I when I first ran it through Helicon, it wouldn't line up the images because of the shift in movement. So I had to actually load them all into one Photoshop file, align the layers that would correct the movement. And then I cropped it down because you could see around the edges where there was like, it didn't stay square. There was some white like triangles coming up around the edges where the, the frame didn't quite line up. So I cropped it down just enough to get rid of all that white space. And then I had to export each um, each layer, like I, each layer is a separate JPEG and then run it back through Helicon and it fixed it that way where it lined it up. But yeah, that that's shifting, but those cinema lenses are pretty expensive, aren't they? No, no, they're, they're, no. they're actually not because they're, they're manual focus. Oh, okay. I believe, I believe the, the ones I was looking at were manual focus. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're doing focus stacking, you wouldn't want to use an autofocus anyways. No, no. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe that's what I'm doing wrong then. Because I uh, was it thinking. Possibly. I'll, I'll try it with that. Because I was thinking if I go manual, then the, the, the camera is not going to work. Uh, no, I, I would think I would think that if you got it manual, then the camera would actually, because it's, it it's just going to change focus by a, a technical. It, the amount of, uh, you know, it's digital. It's going to just change it digitally. If you got the autofocus on, maybe the autofocus is challenging the other thing, yeah. even though I, I doubt Nikon would make it so that if you're, you know, your autofocus was on, that it would somehow mess up the other thing in the no, camera. It has, that would be it has. Sloppy. It has on some, on some sets, it has. And I'm still not managing to get the whole image completely sharp and crisp. I'm not, uh, but you might want to, you yeah. might want to try the Helicon focus. It's got a 30 day trial. And if you're only doing like three or four shots, it doesn't have a big problem with lining it up. I had 11 images to cover, um, probably seven inches from the front to the back, if that. So it, no, there were no, so I, many images. I've been doing a lot of images. I've noticed that it's also when I shoot it just in daylight, natural light, uh, it manages, so it's just a black and white photo then, but it, it does manage to do the thing better. Mm -hmm. I get a better quality sharpness from natural light rather than when I'm using the flashes. So I don't know, you know, probably me lacking technical knowledge and stuff. What type of flash do you have? I've got two eighty two hundreds and one okay. speed light. Shouldn't it shouldn't make any difference? Right. I know. Do you have it, a lot of light on your subject? No, the, it's with the gels. It looks like there's a lot of light, but the flashes are actually actually set quite low. There are no, like no, one. Okay, all right, but there's enough light for it to focus. That's my point. I use a torch light. Okay, all right. I use a, a torch light so that it can focus and then I remove it. Hey Sid, you're gonna need to find out some ways to uh, incorporate focus stacking into shooting people. It's into shooting toys. That sounds perfect for all oh, the toy yeah. stuff that I do. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I, you know, I really love it. We're all so used to the shallow depth of field of a, of a telephoto lens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just used to it. We've been seeing it for 150 years. Yeah. And now when you get in that close with, what our brain obviously knows is a telephoto lens, but everything's sharp. It's yeah. Kind of a fresh look. Yeah. I'll have to try. I'll have to try that. There's a guy downstairs that um, he's done some of that stacking stuff before on smaller things. So yeah, yeah I'll have to give that a shot. It's, it's pretty cool.
Um, I'm going to let everybody go except Sid. Sid, can you hang on for a few minutes? Yeah. Guys, Mark, Sophie, thank you guys for yes, coming thank out. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Take care. Have now. a good week. Be Bye. safe. Bye-bye.